So proper care for your G-Shock starts as soon as you get it. Um, this is an older, this is like a pre-2010, so it has the bronze tin. It's a U.S. export version. Um, Japan uses different packaging, and they tend to not have metal tins like this. But anyway, you want to hang on to all of this stuff. Even if you think, oh, I'm just going to wear this watch, and I'm going to wear it out, and I'm never going to sell it. You don't know that for sure, you know, things can change. And if you ever want to sell it, and it's in reasonably good condition, having all of this stuff, the box, the tin, and when you get inside, um, you know, there's a lot of times there's a little piece of foam on top, and then you have the watch, which is in a plastic bag. Uh, sometimes, even sellers that are selling them as new, um, they may uh, have taken the watch out of the tin for some reason, maybe put it on display for a couple of days, I don't know, or let somebody look at it, and this bag will be missing. That's pretty common. But normally there's a plastic bag, and then you have a tag which has the MSRP, um, and that'll be attached to the buckle generally. And then there's a piece of foam in here. And then you have the watch. Um, uh, anyway, with this packaging, you got another piece of foam. Then there's a bottom foam. And then there's also a user guide down there. You want to save all of this stuff. And, you know, keep everything in good condition so that if you ever want to sell the watch, you can do that. Um, so maybe you're thinking, why don't I just um, leave the watch in the packaging? You know, I mean, let's say you want, it, you want it to be really preserved well for the next five years or, you know, you're um, thinking of just reselling it somewhere down the road. Um, the problem with that is that if it's a solar atomic, your battery will, will run out of charge and that's actually very damaging to the battery. Um, so with a solar atomic, you really need to ha get it to regular light exposure to prevent the battery charge from being drained too low. If it's a straight battery powered G-Shock like this, um, the only thing you have to worry about is the battery going dead after a few years because once these batteries go dead, <clears throat> they can actually develop a leak which can uh, cause damage and even ruin the watch. So in regard to coin cell battery leakage um, and why you want to stay on top of your battery situation with your with your watch collection, I found this article, the Great British Watch Company, uh, and they're talking about silver oxide cells which are typically used in, in battery powered G-Shocks. Uh, the solar atomics use rechargeable uh, cobalt lithium or something like that, so it's, I don't think it's a problem for 20 years or 20 to 30 years. I don't know if you have to ever have to worry about leakage with those, but if you buy a, nor a regular G-Shock that has a silver oxide coin cell battery, in other words, it's not tough solar, um, then you definitely need to be concerned about this. So it says, watch batteries used in quartz watches, specifically silver oxide cells, often leak. Um, the electrolyte used in silver oxide watch battery is highly alkaline and corrosive, so when a battery leaks inside a watch, it can be catastrophic for the movement. In a combined survey of over 3,000 watches where the battery had expired, the percentage of those expended batteries that had leaked was more than 40%. 40%. Um, so, 40% out of 3,000, that's, that's something, you know, it's a reason to be concerned if um, the battery runs out of charge there's a 40% chance basically that it can leak. Of those leaked batteries, a third or between 12 to 15 percent of the total number of watches examined were sufficiently damaged to warrant either a full service or a total replacement of the watch movement. 
Uh, in the remaining two-thirds of the cases with the battery leak, the damage done was not severe enough to warrant a service of the watch or an exchange of the movement, but rather a simple cleanup, which we will demonstrate later. Um, as you can see, this underreported problem can be the cause of great expense and inconvenience to the owner of a quartz watch. There are, however, certain steps that you can take to limit your exposure to any potential problems which this article hopes to introduce. So, anyway, I mean, you can go to this page and, and research more, but the point is that it is something to be concerned about. So I thought I should um, just highlight what's uh, the conclusion at the end of this article, um, you know, how to reduce the risk of your watch battery leaking these uh, five steps. Do not leave a battery in a watch unless you intend to use it. So that's that's the challenge of buying a watch that you just want to keep for collect collection purposes and um, you know sell later on or something you know just buy a watch and put it into storage. Um, you really shouldn't. The best thing is to not leave the battery in there um, to begin with. Um, but then you have to ask yourself, am I prepared? Do I have all the tools um, to, to remove the, the case back? And some watches, you know, if you do that yourself, you avoid the warranty. It has to go to a, uh, an official service center. So, yeah, with battery-powered watches, removing the battery isn't that good of an option. But, you know, I find with with quartz watches regular quartz watches with quartz uh, analog movements they only they only keep going for a couple of years two or three years um, I don't know I mean it's, it's a tough it's not you don't really have good options as far as um, I mean you can buy it and then leave it in storage and then send it to the factory service center every three years and pay you know 60 bucks or whatever they charge to put in a new battery. Um, do not wait until a battery has died before replacing it. Usually, um, you know, with a Casio G-Shock, the display will kind of blank out and the battery s still has life to it. It's not completely dead. So if you see the display is blanked out, or you can try p pressing the um, the illumination button and if there's no illumination or when you press the light button the display goes blank well that you know that the battery charge is low and it's time to replace the battery um, use batteries that are fresh less than six months old any stocks of watch batteries should be refreshed every year I always use a branded battery I found it really interesting that they discovered that Energizer was the best battery at not leaking. Um, so, you know, I mean, everything else was was inferior to uh, Renata, which a lot of people, you know, highly touted, uh, was actually below average. Um, Panasonic is missing from here, so I guess there weren't many G-Shocks in the survey. I'm in the habit of always replacing um, my G-Shock batteries with with more Panasonic batteries, so I kind of am, am sad that that didn't make the survey. So now let's return to the uh, debate about whether to store it in the tin or not, whether that's good for other reasons or not. So on the positive side, leaving the watch in the in the tin, in the original packaging, etc., will most in most cases ensure that the watch stays in the dark, which prevents the resin rot problem. But it can also cause the strap to be compressed, and over time it will tend to settle into that shape, which may not be desirable. The other, the negative part of it is that it makes it difficult to check on the watch to see if the battery is still um, charged and, and the watch is still running. So, you know, especially if you have a lot of G-Shocks that you are preserving uh, for whatever reason. Um, having them, you know, having to take them all out of the tins in order to check them for for the battery life, um, you know, it's a little more difficult that way. One nice thing about these metal tins is that if you're worried about an EMP attack, uh, this will probably keep the EMP from damaging the watch. 
Although I don't think watches are that sensitive to EMP anyway because they, they don't have any long electrical lines attached to them or long antennas or anything. So what I recommend for long-term storage of battery-powered G-Shocks, the ones that are not solar, not tough solar, um, is to get some of these little watch display stands. They're like, I don't know, 50 cents a piece. You can buy these in bulk on eBay. So yeah, just go to eBay, go into the search box, type uh, watch display stand. And yeah, here's some. These are the exact ones right here that I purchased. Um, you can get five of them for $1.96. And there should be some other options for getting. Okay, here we are. 20 pieces for $10 from Malaysia. So, you know, if you want something fancier, you can. Uh, there's other options here that. May be more appealing for you. Just leave the tail sort of hanging loose. These stands do break fairly easily. That's um, one thing you have to be careful about. And this is um, if you're just not going to wear the watch. You know, maybe it's a collector piece and you're not going to wear it. You just want it to be in long term storage. So you can put it on one of these stands and put it in a drawer or a cupboard. Um, and that way you can basically open the drawer, open the cupboard, and look at all of your G-Shocks and make sure that they're all still running. And if there's one not running, you're going to want to change the battery out um, and don't just leave it sitting. Um, you know, I have a Timex. It's been dead for probably a few months. Um, and so that's that's something I need to uh, take care of. But, um, I, you know, don't, don't allow, unless it's a watch that you don't care about, you know, don't just leave it dead for, for months and years on end. But like I said, if you have it on one of these display stands and you have them all in one place, you can just go through them fairly quickly and make sure that they're all still running and if not, replace the battery. Now when it comes to solar atomic G-Shocks, <clears throat> it's a whole different situation. You certainly would not want to store them in the, in the original packaging or in a dark place. They need regular light exposure to keep the battery charge level up. If you let that battery charge level drop down too far, or even stay at a low level for an extended period, it damages the battery and it severely reduces the lifespan of the battery. So as you can see, I have a few of my uh, solar, I got three solar atomics and uh, another solar powered um, Casio watch there. I have them in a windowsill and um, I have the the window glass treated with a, a privacy film. Uh, so the product that mo it is most readily available, I think, when it comes to um, UV blocking window film is this Gila window film, gilafilms.com. Um, as you can see, they sell at Ace Hardware, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. Um, there's automotive versions and uh, home versions. So if I click on home up here. Um, they've got de uh, decorative um, glare control. And there used to be a page where you can see the specifications of all the different films to see you know which ones block the most UV light. Most of them block in the high 90s. Um, I used the privacy mirror style, which um, Yeah, they don't. They don't have a page where you can you can view the specs. It's it's basically a silver color. So you know, if you're walking by and you look in the window, you can't see inside, and that can be helpful. You know, because in certain neighborhoods, if you have a whole bunch of wristwatches sitting in your in your window, 
Certain individuals in the neighborhood might take offense to that and decide that, you know, this guy's trying to make me jealous of his watch collection or something. Yeah, I'll show him what jealousy is all about. It looks like your wristwatches are now my wristwatches. I got jealous. And I think I'll have a good excuse for getting jealous, don't I? Um, well, yeah, so it all depends, I guess, on, you know, whether you're ground level or higher up or... Yeah, I don't know what happened to the to the data specifications. They're trying to move this upscale, you know, and encourage more professional installation and maybe the specs are reserved for, you know, the, the professional installers, so... You want to know what what choice you should make you better consult with your professional installer technician you're too stupid to figure this out for yourself buddy yeah if for whatever reason you don't want to treat your windows they have some they have versions that are removable as well they're static cling so you can apply them to the window and then peel them off maybe different seasons of the year I wish you know I'd gotten that actually sounds like a good choice there are some watch cases that you could put on a window sill, which have a glass panel built in. So if you didn't want to treat your windows, you could just treat the glass panel of the watch display case. Um, but, you know, that's kind of expensive. It's $99.99. It's up to you. The point is, you just want to block that UV light and at the same time have the watch get enough light so that you know the tough solar battery recharging system can keep that battery charge level up. So I've been questioned quite a few times over the years about what I do to clean my G-Shocks or to make videos um, about cleaning and I think um, yeah, it's because it's people are, are real G-Shock enthusiasts and maybe they're hoping that there's some really special technique. Um, but I, I don't really do anything that I think is, is all that special. Um, it all depends on how you're using the watch. You know, if it's just sitting in storage, then you can just use some canned air and blow the dust off or something. Um, if you're a mechanic and it's getting greasy and oily a lot, then, you know, it's going to require some something more intensive. Um if you know, as opposed to being a white collar professional, or I spent ten years as a truck driver, and most of the time I didn't really, you know, get grease, and it was almost like a desk job, really. Um, so that's going to affect what you do to clean your watch. And I guess probably the best place to start is the Casio manual and what Casio actually recommends themselves for what you should do to clean your watch. So if you look down at the number six bullet point here, it says to clean the watch and band, use a dry soft cloth or a soft cloth moistened in a solution of water and a mild neutral detergent. Never use volatile agents such as benzene, thinner spray cleaners, etc. Then it gives you warning about hair liquids, cologne, sunblocks, creams, and other toiletries, uh, which can cause deterioration of the plastic parts. Uh, so if your watch comes into contact with these, you should wipe it off immediately with a dry soft cloth. So here on the next page, you know, it says to store it in a dry place when you're not using it. It doesn't say dark, but um, I guess that's one of the warnings that that should be out there that isn't out there. The fact that ultraviolet light causes deterioration over time. Um, but um, you should store it actually in a dry dark place um, then it warns about solvents and how these can destroy the seals case and the finish um, also you know especially with the more collectible G-Shocks a lot of times they have silk screen printing on them maybe a clear coat finish as well um, and it says you know d not to it advises against rubbing on the printed designs too hard um, so I'm going to show you my cleaning method that I usually use, and it involves a toothbrush. Um, but I usually don't do much of anything to the front of the watch other than rinse it off. Um, the toothbrush is basically on the on the underside of the strap, where you typically won't find any special, you know, silk screen printing and so on. Um, now, one thing that's interesting is down at the bottom, it kind of 
talks about the resin rot issue and suggests that um, this can be caused by dampness. So if you if the watch is wet a lot, soaked with sweat or water, or you're storing it in an area with high humidity, it can cause the band, which is typically urethane resin, to deteriorate, cut, or crack. So to ensure long life of the resin band, wipe off dirt or water with a soft cloth as soon as possible. Like a 100% cotton cloth you can get from an old t-shirt. And the last page is about fluorescent bands and cases. And so this is sort of the standard um, advice that you will find almost word for word in every G-Shock manual. It seems like I remember reading a warning at one time against um, regular exposure to hot water. Um, and I'm not sure what that, what the danger of that is, but, you know, using it to, uh, you know, maybe wash dishes or something all the time may not be such a good idea um, if it's submerged in hot water. So now let's um, take a look at how I clean my G-Shocks typically. So this is what I do. Um, this is probably my favorite daily wear, especially in the wintertime. It's a GWM 5600 Multiband 5 Solar Atomic. No fuss. Um, and I like the fact that it's it's thin so I can fit it under my winter coat sleeve and not have any discomfort issues there. Um, so I usually use this anyway. This is uh, just mild hand soap. I used to use lu lukewarm water, but now I just go with um, um, cold water. Works just as well. It's better. And then I um, just put a dab. Just takes a small dab, probably even less than that, on a medium to soft bristle toothbrush. And then get the whole watch wet. And then scrub the inside because this is usually where the crud builds up, especially if you've been working out or working hard. And it's good to do this um, every, every time you take the watch off, really, the more often the better. You don't have to scrub much on the, um, on the outside usually. Unless you're a mechanic and you got a lot of grease on there. In which case you might want to use dish liquid to help remove that grease a little better. And then rinse it off real good. And a lot of times I'll just use a hand towel. Um, if you want to go upscale you can use... This is 100% cotton. It's just a piece of cloth from an old t-shirt. I live in Cheyenne, Wyoming, 6,000 feet above sea level, and the air is very dry out here, which is why vehicles don't rust. And it also means that water dries quite quickly. So, you know, if I just get the bulk of the water dried off and then uh, set it aside, um, it's, um, it's better to leave the, the end of the strap just straight like that instead of tucking it in to the strap keeper especially if you're going to put the watch into storage for a long time otherwise what tends to happen is if you have the the end of the strap tucked into the keeper like this and it's in storage it'll tend to set with a, a little bit of a kink right there as the uh, urethane material kind of gets stiff over time it, it also sets in um, whatever position it it's in while it's set while it's being stored so then I take this over to my windowsill and uh, that allows it to get daylight to charge up the battery and maintain a full, a full charge and it allows it to uh, receive the atomic clock radio signal and, and remain synchronized you know within a half second and I love that. I have it. I have the auto EL activated all the time, so I basically never have to press a button unless I want to use the alarm or the timer. 
So that's what I do to clean my G-Shocks. Um, I'm not an authority on the matter. Um, you know, a, a Google search resulted in six full pages of results. Um, how to clean G-Shocks, how to clean your G-Shock, etc. All G-Shock related cleaning methods. So, you know, my my approach is pretty simple. I think the most beneficial thing is is regularity. So I don't wear my watch at home. So when I get home, I take it off pretty soon after getting home and and I clean it right away before putting it up on the windowsill or in the cupboard or, you know, wherever I store it. So I know that there are some G-Shocks that have a matte finish. But basically, they have no finish. Uh, they have a light color, and it's just the color of the urethane. Um, urethane is actually naturally white, I believe. And most G-Shocks are black because black dye is added. And when you, with the black dye, you don't notice if there's grease or, or stains in the resin. Um, but when you get into the lighter colors, where you have, you know, like a beige or tan or um, no dye at all or whatever they have to do to make it uh, a bright white color, um, then every little, uh, you know, dirt just sort of seeps into the resin. Um, I don't know if it's because it's a kind of a porous surface or whatever, but it can be pretty hard to clean um, soap and water doesn't work um, immediately you know maybe after several cleanings you'll finally get it but um, you know there's one posting here where someone re recommends using Mr. Clean Magic Eraser for um, white colored um, matte finish G-Shocks or no finish G-Shocks I don't know I mean it, yeah, I guess you would want to look at the chemicals listed on the on the label of the product to see if they match the things that are advised against in the in the user guide by Casio, and if not, um, you know, there's probably a good solution to be found here somewhere. But that's all I have to say about it. Um, I think I'm just about at 30 minutes now anyway, so it's probably time for me to stop yapping and get lost. So thanks for watching, and um, thanks for liking and subscribing if you do, and I'll see you uh, in another G-Shock or watch video or some kind of video in the near future.